What's up, family? So Aaron Hernandez, who once played for the New England Patriots football team, was found hung in his cell earlier today. Goes like this, fam. Former NFL star Aaron Hernandez, who was serving a life sentence for a murder conviction and just days ago was acquitted of double murder, died after hanging himself in his prison cell early Wednesday, Massachusetts prison officials said. Guards found Hernandez unresponsive in his cell at the Salsa Baranowski Correctional Center in Shirley just after 3 a.m., Department of Corrections spokesman Christopher Fallon said in a statement. The former New England Patriots tight end was pronounced dead at UMass Memorial Health Alliance Hospital in Leominster about an hour later. He was 27. Hernandez was in a single cell in a general population housing unit in the maximum security state prison. He hanged himself using a bed sheet that attached to a cell window, Fallon said. Hernandez tried to block the cell door from the inside by jamming the door with various items. Fallon said he's not aware of any suicide note written by Hernandez and stressed that an investigation is ongoing. He said that officials had no concern that Hernandez was planning on taking his own life. And as if there was any concern about his well-being, Hernandez would have been transferred to a mental health unit. The family and the legal team is shocked and surprised at the news of Aaron's death. Don't say. Hernandez's lawyer, Jose B, said in a statement, there were no conversations or correspondence from Aaron to his family or legal team that would have indicated anything like this was possible. Aaron was looking forward to an opportunity for a second chance to prove his innocence. Those who love and care about him are heartbroken and determined to find the truth surrounding his untimely death. We request that authorities conduct a transparent and thorough investigation. The Bees Law Firm will participate in its own examination into these tragic events and update the media and public on his findings when they become available. Hernandez's former agent, Brian Murphy, said Wednesday morning there was absolutely no chance Hernandez took his own life. Chico was not a saint, but my family and I loved him, and he would have never taken his own life. Hernandez was moved to tears on Friday after he was acquitted of the 2012 fatal shooting of Daniel Diabro and Sefiro Furtado in Boston. Just before his acquittal, Hernandez was seen blowing kisses to his little girl he fathered with fiance, Shiana Jenkin Hernandez. He was still serving a life sentence without possibility of parole for his conviction in the 2013 shooting of Odin Lloyd, who was dating Jenkins Hernandez's sister. Hernandez was tried but acquitted in the slaying of Diablo and Furtado whom prosecutors contend were gunned down after one of the men accidentally spilled a drink on Hernandez in a Boston nightclub. The jury in the case found Hernandez not guilty of first degree murder, but convicted him of unlawful possession of a gun, and the judge sentenced him to an additional four to five years in prison, separate from his existing life sentence. His death was a shocking and sad end to a very tragic series of events that has negatively impacted a number of families, said Bristol County District Attorney Thomas Quinn, who prosecuted Hernandez in the Lloyd case. Hernandez grew up in Connecticut and played for the Patriots from 2010 to 2012. In his second year, he caught 79 passes for 910 yards and seven touchdowns and helped the team to reach Super Bowl. In 2012, he signed a five-year, $40 million contract extension. The team released him in June 2013, shortly after he was convicted and arrested in Lord's killing. All right, y'all, so here's the thing that's interesting about this case. And I'm, I'm going to get to what I really think with what I really think is going on, and I'm sure many of you probably share my, my sentiments. 
Hernandez's legal team can file a motion to vacate uh, the conviction of 2013. Uh, and if the motion is filed, the conviction will be vacated. Now this is, uh, in legal terms, what is called an abatement ab initio. Whereas upon a person's death, if they haven't exhausted all of their legal appeals, uh, the case reverts back to its original beginning, original status. So it goes all the way back. It's as if the trial and the conviction never happened. That was interesting. I didn't know that. Um, but let's get let's get into it. The, the first thing that, that comes to mind when a person kills themselves, you say, why? Why would this person kill himself? Now, the dude just got, he just got off on a double murder. He was just acquitted of a du double murder. And he had one, and this double murder was tied in to his, was used to help convict him on the charge where, he's where he was currently serving a life sentence on. So he was about to get a new trial on that. So things were looking up for him. The family said it themselves. You know, he would never do this. The lawyer said, quote, There were no conversations or correspondence from the Aaron, from Aaron to his family or legal team that would have indicated anything like this was possible. Aaron was looking forward to an opportunity for a second chance to prove his innocence. Now, I'm not saying the dude is innocent. I'm not saying the dude is guilty. I'm not even, I'm not question, questioning any of that. What I'm questioning is the state of mind irregardless of whether the dude did it or not. See, if we just ignore what's going on in these jails around America with people being hung, found hung under suspicious circumstances, people showing up dead when they're getting ready to make bun, it, the shit don't make no sense, man. And I know many of y'all who, you know, follow the good path, you know, the, on the straight and narrow, never made any mistakes in your life, ain't gonna never find yourself in jail. I know y'all can't see that. People with no moral flexibility, I get you. You can't see it. He did the crime, he did the time. Whatever happened to him happens to him. I couldn't give a damn. Now, what I'm saying is this. It's a certain culture of behavior that's going on in these jails and people turning up dead. You never know. You could get pulled over for speeding, you know, going a little too fast. And, you know, the arrest may not, I mean, the, 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 the stop may not go as smooth as you had planned and somehow, just I like, don't know how, you may end up in jail. Maybe you got a little test there, the, the, the cop was just a little too aggressive, whatever it is, but somehow you ended up in jail. Oh, whatever, what if it was one of your loved ones? It will happen. One of your loved ones are gonna end up in jail. I don't care how perfect you are. Somebody you love going to jail. When they go to jail, when you feel safe, when you feel good knowing that if you go to jail, I'm not talking about, especially prison, I'm not talking really talking about prison, but if you go to jail, wouldn't you want at least, you wouldn't you, well, yeah, prison too, wouldn't you want them to at least feel safe around the guards? You know, like, because the guards have more power than the inmates. The guards can go into your room, to go into your cell and take you down the hallway in the middle of the night and nobody never see you again. You know, if an inmate do something to, something to you, 
uh, more than likely it's going to be seen. People are going to catch it. There's going to be cameras. It's going to be some type of documented evidence that that inmate did that. But a guard can take you for a little walk and you never come back. A guard can turn the cameras off, go into the room, go into your cell, create a diversion, go into your cell or whatever, and try to make it seem like you know, it's something else. Try to make it seem like they're coming in to, to get you for something or they're coming in to, to to feed you or they're coming in or you making some type of disturbance so they're going in to try to, you know, restrain you. And they'll go in there and hang your ass. Yeah, it happens. I just don't believe all of these, these hangings that's going on in jail. It's, it's too many suspicious uh, circumstances too many too many too many times people are being hung you know there, there used to be a saying about protective custody that shit don't exist no more <laughs> you know what I'm saying that don't exist so I just want to know like what you guys think about all of this I mean really like let's get past the fact whether he was guilty or innocent it's something going on inside of these jail cells. There's something going on inside of these prisons. People are not just hanging themselves like they say. I don't believe them. I think that, uh, I think it was an inside job. I think that they conspired to kill that man. I don't know what he did. I don't know what pissed them off, but I think they killed that man because I'm going to tell you something else that I, I don't know him personally, but everything that I saw about that dude, read about him, he seems to be an egotistical dude. And egomaniacs, they love themselves too much to hurt themselves. I don't think the man would have killed himself. Not at all. Not at all. I would employ the family to get down to the bottom of it, do whatever you got to do, exhaust every single uh, legal uh, uh, remedy that you can to, to get down to the bottom of it and find the truth because somebody killed that boy. He did not kill himself. Somebody killed him or somebody's killed him, which is probably more plausible because he was a pretty big dude. So that's what I think happened. I think they killed the man. But, you know, I know some of y'all just trust anything, law enforcement tell y'all. If the, law, law, the police say it happened, that's what happened. And so, I mean, I can't do nothing about that. I mean, but I, I, I get where you're coming from because, you know, after all, our judicial system would never, ever, ever lie to us. They would not do to us, do that to us as Americans. No more time.